Welcome back, friends and family, to Homeschool Together. This week, we have, we are finally here at the last... We've made it. We've made the last epoch of, of, of the world up until today. The Cenozoic period, talking specifically about the Paleogene and the Neogene period. So if you can wrap your head around it, it's from 65 million years ago to about two and a half million years ago. Right so the up the end of the dinosaurs. Up to the dawn of essentially, you know, Australopithecus walking around in Africa. So right around in that time frame, this is the time period we're talking about. So this is mainly the age of mammals and specifically talking about out of the, you know, the great, the second great extinction, you know, after the Permian period, um, life had to reboot again. And we had to talk about, you know, what, what got rebooted why those things got rebooted and really focusing on for us this week the megafauna so again in a vacuum of 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 life um, massive animals appeared again because there's kind of this void that needed to be filled and how these animals kind of took over the you know these areas of the world and grew enormously large and we focus mainly on the common evolution of mammals that my daughter really knows about mm -hmm. horses elephants and rhinos focusing on how they evolved, where they came from, how they went from you know, little tree creatures into these huge, you know, forest creatures to these huge animals that we, that we, we, that are now extinct today, but leaving behind yeah. the animals that we know today. So that was kind of our focus this, this, this time period. So it was, it was a, it was a fun one, so, right. but we had, we had to begin somewhere. Well, right. And so we, we used all the same books that are called out in the curriculum, yep. but this one really, once we saw this, uh, thread, this, this thread, it took me about we two like, days to see this thread. Hey, now, um, do you want to show the Osborne first? Yes. Let's go. Yeah, ahead. Let's show that one first. This, this is the build your library spine, but we want the, it. uh, the Usborne um, Encyclopedia of World History, which is wonderful. Yeah. But this is just a great overview, and it gives you an idea of the types of creatures that we're going to start talking about. Yep. Uh, just a few pages really summarizes it well. Great artwork, um, great, great text, super simple, and then just basically essentially talking about the rise of mammals and all the various... Very easy to understand. And, and as we were working through this, start talking about scavengers and hunters because, you know, as these mammals appeared, some of these mammals you know, developed into carn carnivorous animals, some were, or, uh, you know, they ate plants. So there was this rise of those, those animals and then also the rise of the large uh, mammals. And then finally I saw the horse's tail and I said, oh, wow, mm. this is a really interesting thing because it's kind of taking you from a super small proto horse that kind of ran around in the forest and it was about the size of a small dog and being preyed on by super large birds um, to the, the, the beautiful horses that we know today. Right, and how did that evolve? And I said, "Wow, okay, this is a horror, this is an animal that my daughter knows about. Um, let's explore some other ones." And they had, I think, they had a section in here on elephants, and I think there was one about rhinos as well. And I was like, "Ah, oh, this is a great theme mm -hmm. about this kind of rise of the common animal that, that you know, the large, massive, large mammals that we have on the planet today. You know, where did they start from? Where did they come from? And how did they evolve? And that kind of like set the theme for the entire, you know, about a week, week and a half that we've been um, we've been on mm -hmm. this. So this is really great. That's a good, good indication. But I did try to start somewhere first, which was what is a mammal, right? And so in this book here that we have animal. Yeah, so this is a DK Smithsonian. This is part of the exclamation series. So there's we know dinosaur, about the dinosaur and animal, oceans. Ocean, and, um, there's space. Ooh, that's space. a good one. There's history. Yeah. So these are all beautiful books. So we went right into it and we just talked about, you know, what type, what is an animal, anim, uh, a mammal? And we talked about the three types, you know, monotremes, uh, marsupials, and placental mammals, and talking about the various different ways those mammals, um, you know, give birth to their young, how they nourish those young, and how it's a li slightly different across them all, but they all share very similar traits. Um, and then from there, which was really nice, um, it starts going into some, you know, uh, uh, large mammal, so it starts going into the marsupials and, and breaks those down and then cuts through all those various animals. So if you find an, a mammal that you particularly like, you can dive deep into it. But we decided to go on to sort of this evolutionary track and I'll see if I can pull these things out here. So the first thing I did is I ran upstairs and I said, oh, in our in our kind of massive you know collection of eyewitness books, makes me so happy. I bet you, I bet you we have books about these various animals. I bet you in these books they talk about the evolution of them, and I would be right. So the first one I grabbed was horses because I, I saw that section in the encyclopedia, um, the Usborne Encyclopedia, and it showed kind of the evolution of the horses. And lo and behold, in the first few pages, it absolutely did talk about, you know, the evolution of the horse and where it kind of came from and how horses evolved. And it started talking about all these topics. And so we mm -hmm. could talk about, you know, what it looked like 
you know, when he was younger and, and how it moved on. And this was really cool. And so then I, I was able to say, okay, well, well, what about elephants? And so, yeah, I ran upstairs and got the elephant book. And, and, and lo and behold... I've been collecting these for like 15 years, you guys. So it makes me so happy. Yeah. And he's just like going, wait, I have a eyewitness book for that. Yeah, so it's talking about the family tree of elephants and how they changed over time and everything. And so, again, it was just like two or three pages on each one of these books. And then there was another one here as well. I'm just kind of rapid firing through them. Um, this was mammals in general. And, again, they had you know, an evolutionary section right up front. And they're almost, once I got the one, I was like, I bet you they're all like this. <laughs> and it was all very predictable, understanding like where the evolution comes from, you know, what makes a mammal, mm -hmm. how it gets there, and all the different, you know, aspects of it, you know, evolution of mammals here. And so you just get these great little one or two page spreads that kind of answer those questions for you. So whether you need the animal exclamation point or you need the animal, you know, the mammal uh, eyewitness book, doesn't matter they all cover the similar topics and it depends on how much you want to dive into but it But it's really neat you know if you have a child who's exactly. really into horses or really loves big animals like elephants you can check this book out from your library or start mm -hmm. your own eyewitness book collection uh, which is what we've been doing and you know you can really enjoy and pull yeah. these extra books in I think this is a really great yeah. example of how you were able to take something that she was interested in pull on that thread mm -hmm. go gather some books from the house we didn't even uh, we could have gone to the library and gotten a bunch of books on elephants and horses and things, but yeah. this is what we had, and you know, we, we pulled yeah. it in and made it part of this lesson. And the book that we referenced last week, which was When Whales Walk the Earth, um, you know, we, we, we talked a little bit about last week, but we dove through like three or four or five sections of kind of spreads. And again, the rise of the rhinos and the elephants and man, they talked about all that stuff in that book as well. Mm -hmm. So when you piece all these two, these three or four or five books together, you start to see kind of a through line of these you know, the evolution of these famous large mammals that we have today and where do they originate from? And that was really the, the best thing. And that kind of led into maybe we can jump into a little bit of the art. I really challenged my daughter to, you know, practice making the various um, evolutions of, of the horse and, you know, numbering them from one to three, four, five, and using these books to help guide her and think about, well, how did these animals change and ultimately become a horse? And yeah, that's a pretty good horse. Not bad. Yeah. Yeah. She was, she was doing the copying, so putting it over the top and then copying that. So that was really cool. We also did one for uh, rhinos. So early early rhinos here. I think this is another proto rhino. And this is more of a kind of a late modern rhino, last 30,000 years. And then um, my daughter, my younger daughter got involved and made a family portrait. <laughs> and then I don't know what this is. So <laughs> it all came along with it. Three-year-old art. Three-year-old art. But, but, you know, it led into a lot of like exploratory play and, you know, the fun art that we did. Um, these things really just kind of fed into it. And we even played a little bit of timeline game. So I, I had her make um, a giant timeline here and we were putting the animals that she was drawing on the various portions of the timeline. So she knows, oh, that was early Cenozoic period rhino. And that's a horse that's towards the end, you mm -hmm. know, when, when you know, the, the family of Equus kind of came in and that's at the end here. And so we were able to put the animals where they, where they belonged and that was, Again, showing her the timeline. Okay, this was millions and millions and millions mm -hmm. of years. You know, sun going around the earth a million times. That is, you know, it was. I th it was. It was a good. Ex it was a good exploration of these right. creatures. And, and again, talking about evolution, talking about the importance of these creatures. I think the timeline is really important, and we would have definitely. I love the idea of putting the timeline on the mm -hmm. wall. Build your library really encourages you to do a big timeline. Um, we have a three-year-old, and so we can't put the timeline on the wall. It would just be drawn on all the time. Yeah. But when we come back around, when our three-year-old is six, and we're going to do this again, yeah. um, I definitely think that's something that we will do, is to have a big timeline, you know, that wraps around the homeschool room or the dining room or wherever, mm -hmm. yeah. and have the kids be drawing on it as we go through the weeks Putting, and the different creatures. And, creatures and then they can there. see, at the end, they'll have this entire understanding yeah. of how life evolved on earth. So I think that's a great idea. Um, so you, this is kind of our way to contain it and do it in a, a way that our three-year-old can't, you yep. know, get to right away. But I think doing it on the wall and doing a big one is what we will definitely do next time. So if you don't have a little one around, highly recommend that you, you know, put something, put your paper or something up on mm -hmm. the wall and, and try to do some drawing on it because it's really right. great. 
Exactly, yeah. Um, we talked a little bit about apes um, in this week, but we didn't really focus on it because I, I peeked ahead and that's coming up. So there's a little bit of um, uh, kind of a crossover on time frame. So the, the next, I think the next week, we're going to talk a little bit more about primates. Yeah. And primates started to evolve during this time frame, but we didn't really focus on it yet. Because I this know, was primarily a blossom and root yeah. week with like a day of Build Your Library. But, but I know... And next week, it's going to be all Build Your Library. Yeah, and we know the story, the story of the rise of, of apes and, and, and ultimately humans um, is coming. And so I'm, yeah. I didn't really want to focus as much on that. I guess not the, next week. Two, in two, two weeks. weeks two in two weeks. weeks. Next uh, one's Ice Age. Ice Age. And so I, I really want to, like, even then, we I think we're going to start talking about it then. But this was, let's talk about the other animals before we like we spend the rest of like the next yeah, month on, on humans. So we got these out of the way, and this was really, really good. And I enjoyed it. I was able, it was really fun to be able to pull these books in and kind of develop a theme around this time period that I think was exciting for my daughter. Um, next thing we did was we did a bunch of videos. There were a lot of videos called out, a lot of Eon's videos. We watched all of them. I think there were 10 or 12 of them. We watched them all. Oh, so good. But the big standouts was the how the horses took over North America twice. <laughs> and so we, we enjoyed that because that paired well with our horse study. Um, and then also there was a really cool North American bone crushing dogs, the Smilodons, um, really fun videos about the rise of these kind of large dogs and large cats and there, there were a couple of videos on the on the kind of the cat and dog families as they emerged really fun um to talk about and, and see and and kind of explore in that idea especially when we've got our lazy dog sitting on the couch you, know, you got better genes than this dog but anyway so that was where we were um next thing we did was art obviously we talked about the evolution of large animals that i kind of showed you here that was really cool we did a, a study about this snake um, that was in south america i think columbia area um, it was a very hot period on the planet, super hot, and so allowed some of these reptiles to get enormous. <sighs> and specifically, the Titana boa, which was the largest snake that we believe um, has ever been 50 feet. And so, what, what the I think Blossom Rue called it out, or yeah, yeah, I think it was Blossom Rue. Um, the way you, way she organizes everything, it kind of all blends together for me. But um, I think it was Blossom Rue, and basically, we took blankets and pillows and 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 the you know the tumbling mat and we took to make something that was 50 feet long around the house and it was funny because you came home right when we finished making it and it was funny you're like walking in you're like what is going on and the girls are running around like ch getting chased by this giant snake and we made a kind of a snake head at the end because it's this kind of constricting type of they believe it's like a constricting animal uh a snake and it was super long it ran all the way down our house curled around our, our living room almost back into our kitchen and the girls were like pretending like they were running from the Titana bow. And I got the, uh, the the tape measure out. I believe it was about three feet uh, thick. And so I was like, this is how tall it is. And I made as tall of, as your sister. And I, I made them crawl through it. So I'm like, you could crawl through the Titana boa. And so they were had a great time. It was, it was very reminiscent of when we drew the Stegosaurus out in the front driveway, um, really playing with the scale and the size, especially since this week we were talking about megafauna with the large horses and the... Um, the large elephants, the large rhinos, the, you know, all these large creatures. It was fun, again, to ha kind of explore mm -hmm. the idea of size. And because, they, you know, they're small little critters and people. And, you know, they got a big, you know, moose-like dad that walks around and protects them in the roads because nobody wants to hit a moose. Um, but, you know, so it's fun to have them kind of play with like, oh, my gosh, this is a really big animal. And, you know, you know me, what do I have a natural fear of? Any animal larger than me. I have, I, as, I, as a non-starter. So... <laughs> But anyway, we had a fun time. Cenozoic period, Paleogene, Neogene. So mm -hmm. basically 65 million years ago, all the way up to about 2.5 million years ago. And there was some, you know, obviously a little bit, you know, we crossed over that a little bit because with the horses and some of the rhinos were kind of in the last 100,000 years. Doesn't matter. Have fun with it. Yeah. Really explore it and, and enjoy it. I think here in the next four or five um, kind of sections that we're going to do, it's only going to be in the last you know, two, two million years. And so there's going to be a lot of crossover and it's really going to be hard to keep the dates and times aligned. And I know I have a feeling we're going to be like, oh, okay, we're going to talk about 10,000 years ago. And then we're going to read something that's like about 2 million years ago. And then back to 200,000 years ago. And then yeah, we're going to see how here, this all comes together. We're going to be jumping around a lot. We have one more week of Blossom and Root with yeah. the last Ice Age. And then we're going to be doing three solid weeks of Just Build Your Library because that's a point where the curriculum really focuses on mm -hmm. early man. And then we'll be finishing up with the last uh, Rise of Humankind yeah. from 
blossom and root um, and looking into the future. So we're going to see how this all works out. This is the plan, but mm -hmm. we'll definitely be getting back with you as we go along Absolutely. with whether it worked or whether we should change the order when you go through <laughs> and do it, which hopefully you will because we've really been enjoying this journey. Yep. So next week, humans.